All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Alpha Obeisance channel. This is episode one of a Noob's Guide to Hyperland. Uh, this guide come into fruition because my 14-year-old, who also happens to use Arch Linux, uh, saw me using Hyperland and thought it'd be really cool to be able to develop his own Hyperland experience. Unfortunately, you can imagine how difficult it is to get a 14-year-old to not only read something on the internet uh, such as this, but uh, to actually commit to studying it to understand it. So this is my attempt to make a noob-friendly approach to Hyperland because if you've ever read the wiki, um, it's obviously developed by power users for power users. So uh, this is my attempt to take you guys along in my incredibly micromanaged configuration files where I break down every line uh, explaining every feature and functionality that Hyperland has to offer as I know them now. Keep in mind I am actively developing my own desktop environment. Uh, what you see here is the current pro uh, uh, current status of my, my desktop experience. So I'm still learning myself, but I've been using Linux extensively uh, for the past five years. So uh, I have a bit of a head start on my kid. So um, yeah, ideally you guys will learn something from this. And uh, if you do, if you find it useful, consider smacking that like button. Let me and my son know I'm not as dumb as I look sometimes. If I am as dumb as I look sometimes, hit that down like button and drop a comment below and let me know how dumb I really am. I digress. We're going to go ahead and start by introducing Hyperland. Those of you who either may not have heard of it or maybe you have but you don't know much about it, it's my goal to kind of clarify what it is and what it has to offer. So without further ado, what is Hyperland? It's a dynamic tiling Wayland compositor that provides a modern alternative to traditional window managers and Linux environments. It is designed to offer a highly configurable, visually appealing, and efficient experience tailored specifically for users who prefer Wayland over older X11 display server protocol. Why should you consider it? Well, it's efficient and productive. A tiling window manager allows you to manage multiple windows at once without wasting screen real estate, making it a favorite among developers, systems administrators, and power users. It's got modern features such as touch gestures, multiple monitors, and dynamic workspace management. It's under active development, meaning that it's uh, developed and frequently updated with new features, bug fixes, and performance improvements. It's got key features such as being Wayland-based, unlike traditional X11-based compositors such as i3 or Sway, Hyperland runs on Wayland, which is a more modern display server protocol. Wayland offers several advantages over X11, including improved performance, security, and support for modern hardware. It's a dynamic tiling window manager, meaning that windows can be dynamically resized, moved, and arranged based on a user-defined rules or hotkeys, providing an efficient workflow without sacrificing aesthetics. Uh, it's got customizable layouts, so users can create and switch between multiple layout configurations with ease, making it simple to adapt the workspace for different tasks and workflows. It's got compositor integration, meaning that Hyperland includes a built-in compositor, which reduces latency, enables seamless window animations, and provides tear-free graphics rendering. Uh, it's got animations and theming effects. Hyperland supports various graphical effects and animations, providing a visually appealing environment with support for CSS-like stylings. Hyperland users, uh, excuse me, Hyperland allows users to create unique and visually appealing themes that cater to their personal preferences. Last but not least, it's got a modular design. It supports various modules and extensions such as Waybar, which is a status bar, and integrates well with other Wayland utilities and tools. So now the Joe Nobody perspective. Why really though? Uh, so up to this point, I've given you a pretty textbook explanation as to what Hyperland is, what its key features and functionalities are, and why you may want to consider it if you're an ultra giga chad power user. But in this case, you wouldn't be watching this tutorial. So here's my personal average Joe take. Uh, it's got KDE aesthetic possibilities. Ever since I started using Linux and desiring to say, I use Arch by the way, I've wanted to use a window, or excuse me, a tiling window manager. I really, really like organization. I find it so incredibly distracting to have windows just stacked and staggered in every which way. But I hadn't found a window manager that was capable of offering quality tiling functionality while simultaneously giving me all of the sexy aesthetics offered by KDE Plasma and GNOME. If you wanted a tiling man window manager, you pretty much had to commit to giving up animations and window effects entirely. Hyperland solves this better than any other I've found to date. Yeah, it's not giving me those sexy hexagon animations made available by way of GNOME and KDE, but 
it's got transparency, blurs, shadows, sliding, and tra transitional animations. I figure it's only a matter of time before someone clever comes up with those elite tier effects on Hyperland. I love Burn My Windows, like it's hands down my favorite uh, feature from KDE, Plasma, and GNOME. But for now, Hyperland feels so damn good to use, and it's easy to look at with everything that it has to offer. Now, disadvantages. The bitter, unavoidable truth is that it is the double-edged sword of all things Linux. When it comes to Hyperland, you've got to want it. You're going to do it yourself. You need to be absolutely prepared to spend hours and hours of reading documentation, watching video tutorials like this one. I appreciate you. This is a lot of work to try and get right for you. Uh, or reverse engineer countless scripts and configurations in order to build your own. Hyperland really doesn't come with any pre-configured setups, and those that you can find typically force you into taking on 100 times the learning curve rather than starting from scratch and working your way up. If you install someone else's dot files, you'd better know what you're doing or anticipate tripling your study time because none of those guys are going to walk you through their configurations as I do mine. And um, it's a pretty high likelihood that most of their scripts and configurations are really not well documented. So, uh, yeah, this, this is my attempt to make it a little bit easier for you guys. Now the gains. You'll gain genuine pride, a feeling of deep pleasure or satisfaction derived from one's own achievements. The achievements of those with whom one is closely associated or from qualities or possessions that are widely admired. Seriously, learning to configure your own system is a feeling so few get to truly experience. Even fewer get to experience what it's like to build a rig from the ground up, buying the components, installing them, ensure they function and post properly, installing the operating system, I use Arch by the way, optimizing that operating system in ways people told you would never be possible, and then kicking back and enjoying the fruits of all your years of dedication to the craft. So that is Hyperland. That is what it is, what it has to offer, and why you might want to consider it. And in the next video, we're going to talk about the configuration files themselves. Again, if you would like to follow along with my own dot files, you can download. The, excuse me, you can download them in the description below. And uh, we'll talk about how I've got it laid out and why I've got it laid out that way. And then episode three, we will start diving into configurations and breaking them all down line by line so that you can develop your own Hyperland desktop. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. God bless. And we'll see you there.